Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Roberson. I work as a developer advocate here at Elastic and today we'll be covering the match boolean prefix query. Now in this video, the first thing that we'll do is we'll go over an example in Elastic Cloud just to get an understanding of the match boolean prefix query, exactly how you run it against your data set. And then we will go into our whiteboard and sort of go into further detail of like the definition and a few more examples for the match boolean prefix query. And then we'll end by running those examples within our Elastic Cloud. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so whenever we're running a query, we're gonna ask a question, and that question for the match boolean prefix query could be, how can I run a search where terms can be matched at any position with the last term being the prefix? So what does that mean that terms can be matched at any position? If we take, for example, this term, these terms, fresh AP, we're running this on the description field. If we take a look at our data set, so let's take a look at our data set. All right, so in our data set, we have the different fields that we can run on, we have minutes, we have steps, we have the description field, tags, name, all of these, right? And so if we were looking for a fresh AP and we could match in any position, that means that we can find documents containing fresh or we can have documents containing AP, right? Either or or both, but it doesn't have to include all of them, okay? And so what this means that they can match in any position is that the way the match bool prefix query is constructed is that it creates sort of that independence between the searches for each of these terms, okay? Now let's write out this example. How would this query look? based on this first example. All right, so now we have our query. We're searching on the description field for fresh AP. Now let's run it. All right, so we get back fresh apricot. Okay, so that matches our query. And then we have fresh apple that also matches our query. Now when we get to our fourth example, it says fresh figs for your baklava. Okay, as you can see, we're getting back a result that contains fresh, but it doesn't contain AP, okay? And it goes back to that point I was I was making in, in that it can be matched and any of these terms can be matched in any position. And we can find results for each of these terms or all of the terms can be contained in the field it's just not necessarily guaranteed. So now let's try to understand the match pool prefix query a little bit better. All right, so our match pool prefix, we're here in our Elastic, official Elastic documentation. I highly recommend checking it out. It's pretty useful in situations like this when you wanna run a specific query and may not know how or wanna get more background on it. All right, so the match pool prefix query, it analyzes its input and then it constructs a bool query from the terms, right? So let's take a look at the bool query. What is the bool query? It allows for you to match at any position and this happens because it takes each of the terms and it turns those into individual queries and so I'm not going to jump into it completely but uh, when we look at what are called term level queries we have prefix we have the term query and so these queries allow for searches to happen based on a single term okay so based on one term and so when we look at the boolean query it creates a, a combination of other queries in order to get back documents. And it does this through the use of clauses. Now let's take a look at an example and hopefully this kind of clears up any confusion. And so when we look at this example, we have within our must clause, we're using a term query and we're saying, hey, we're looking for this specific term on the user ID field. This has to be included for the document to be considered a match. We wanna filter for documents, okay? So documents that have kimchi within the user ID also should have the tags the production tax. So only those documents that are of type production are associated with production. Any documents where the age is between 10 and 20 don't include that. And then for should, we're saying it would be nice within our tax field that it contains M1 as well as deployed. And for each of these terms that we're looking for, we're running a term query. Okay, so this is a term level query. So this is how a basic structured Boolean query would look. Now let's take a look at the relationship between the Boolean query and the match bool pre prefix query. All right, so we looked at this within our documentation. Let's say we have the search terms white, wine, and then the prefix vin. And so we talked about how the bool query itself is a combination of queries. So this would be a term query. This would also be a term query because we're looking for this bool term. And this one would be a prefix query. 
okay? And let's say not all of these terms will be returned back or have to be returned back. Okay, so white, wine, you know, V-I-N, these aren't, you know, mandatory, right? So we can enclose these in a should clause, okay? Okay, and so this means that either of these can be returned back as a valid result, okay? So how would this look in query form? So let me write this out. If we were searching for this term and we were looking within the ingredients field. All right, so here we have our query. We were looking for white wine VIN. And so our bool query for a basic match bool prefix query would look like we would have our should clause. And so we would say the documents should contain in the ingredients field the term white. It also should contain the term wine. And then it should also contain the prefix VIN. And so this is how we would go from that match bool prefix query in its basic structure to a bool query in its back end. All right, so the match bool prefix query, it analyzes its terms and then it constructs a bool query, all right? And one thing that I'll note is that the match bool prefix query uses or logic by default. Now, when we think about our parameters, the parameters refine our search. When we think about the operator parameter, we can change the or logic to then use the and operator, okay? it changes this to then in, okay? So we wanna make sure that all the documents that are returned contain white in wine in VIN in whatever the field that we're searching on. All right, so that's the operator parameter. And then the other parameters that we can use with this query is minimum should match, the analyzer parameter, as well as fuzziness. So the ones that we'll highlight today is we'll talk about operator, minimum should match, as well as fuzziness. As far as analyzer, the only thing I'll say about this is that we're able to use the standard analyzer or we can use the custom analyzer. And what it does is it controls the way that the initial search terms here are processed, okay? So they can all be lowercase, separated into individual terms tokens, you're able to change that using the custom analyzer, or you can stick with the standard analyzer. So that's all I'll say for this parameter. All right, so let's dive deeper into the difference between the operator parameter and the minimum should match parameter. Okay, so we talked about the operator parameter and that the operator parameter allows for us to go from or logic to and logic. When we use the and operator, right, we're saying that, hey, all the documents that are returned back should contain all of these terms. And so it's making our search more more narrow and this may result in less documents being returned back. Now one thing to keep in mind is that by using the and operator we're not saying hey preserve this entire phrase that will be a different query so we're not saying hey all of this we're saying that these terms can be present within the field in whatever order they come in. So when we think about the minimum should match what this does is let's say we use the and operator and we only get back a few results as opposed to the numerous of results we were first getting back. So let's say we wanted to increase increase the amount of results we get back while still making sure that it's still as precise as we can get it. So what the minimum should match parameter does is it sets the minimum number of terms within our search terms that have to be present within the field of the document for that document be considered a match. So for instance, if we were to set minimum should match to be two, we have three terms what this does is saying instead of n, so n says, hey, all of these need to be present. And so a minimum should match says is, okay, two of these, and it can be any combination, right? It doesn't have to be, it could be even these two or just white wine, but at least two of these terms need to be present within the document for it to be considered a match. And so we're still increasing our precision a little bit more, but we're making sure that we're not limiting our results as much as we would if we were just using an operator by itself. Another thing that I'll hint at here is that the and operator and the minimum should match parameter should be used separately. Okay. The reason why I say that is because if the N operator says, hey, we want all three of these to be included, but minimum should match is saying, okay, only two, then we're contradicting ourselves. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there. So let's create an example using minimum should match and sending it to two within our match rule prefix query. So if we were searching for white wine, VIN, we're searching within our ingredients field, and then we were setting the minimum should match to two, how would we write that example? So you can pause the video here, write it out yourself, and then we'll come back and write it out together. All right, so hopefully you were able to write this out on your own. Now let's write it out together.
All right, so here we have our query. We're looking in the ingredients field for white wine VIN. And so we're requiring that at least two of these search terms are included within the fields that are counted as valid results. So we've touched on the analyzer parameter. Then we talked about the difference between the operator parameter as well as minimum should match. Now let's talk about my favorite thing, fuzziness. All right, so what is fuzziness? Okay, so it's the number of character edits or the edit distance to go from one word to another. So if we wanted to go from BA to AB, okay? And character edits being deletion, subtraction, as well as swaps. And one thing I'll note is that fuzziness, the parameter itself, it defaults to auto. Now with fuzziness, we have this initial parameter, so fuzziness set to auto. We also have supporting parameters. The first one is fuzzy transpositions. This allows for the required deletion, insertion, as well as swaps for one term to become another, okay? So this is the behind the scenes of what's happening when we allow for auto to take place, okay? Now this value, or this parameter defaults to true. If we were to set it to false, then the deletion, insertion, and swaps wouldn't automatically take place. Another supporting parameter we have is the prefix length. Prefix length is the number of beginning characters that should remain fixed or unchanged. So let's say we have the term avocado and this is misspelled, but let's say we know for sure that the first three terms of any terms that are included in this specific field are always pretty much in the exact order that they should be. So we could set prefix length to three. And again, this is an example, but the default value for this is zero. The last one I'll cover is max expansions. This specifies the max number of matching terms within the edit distance. So what does this mean? C-H-E-R-E, -E, okay? So maybe we were trying to spell chair. We have a number of terms that can fit it based on the edit distance. So maybe we have char, chair. So these are all possible suggestions that we can make using the fuzziness process. And these are all the possible terms that this misspelled term can expand to. And so we can set the max expansions to whatever number that we decide, but it defaults to 50. And so with including these expansions, it does impact performance. And so we could even set max expansions to an even lower number. But again, it does default to 50. All right, so this is fuzziness. Fuzziness allows for when you're typing within a field and let's say you misspell a word, but you still want to be able to get back results. This allows for that to take place. So what I want us to do is we have the first example where we're looking for white wine VIN in the ingredients field. Now I want us to be able to include fuzziness and you can also include the supporting parameters in their default form just to kind of get a feel for using them or implementing them. It's not required, but you can include them. So see if you can implement the match bool prefix query that uses fuzziness to correct these misspelled words and still get back the correct documents. All right, so hopefully you were able to pause the video and write this on your own. Now let's write this out together. All right, so here we have it. We're using fuzziness within our match pool prefix query, looking for the correct documents, even though we have misspelled words. All right, so we've taken a look at two examples. Now let's run them within our Elastic Cloud just to make sure that we get back the expected results. So here's our first example. We're looking within our ingredients field for white wine VIN, and we are only requiring that two of the terms be included within the field for that document to be considered a match. And so if we run this, we get back 236 results, so ingredients, so white wine, vinegar, white wine, okay? So if we go all the way down to the bottom in the ingredients field, we're still getting back at least white wine, even if we're not getting back white wine VIN or white wine vinegar, we're still getting back white wine. All right, so it's as expected. And one thing I wanna do is if we were to get rid of this and run our results, we get back 883, right? So we get back a bunch of results. And then if we scroll down, let's see, ingredients, we still get back white wine. We get back white wine vinegar. And so that makes sense that we're still getting back accurate results. Think about it if we were searching within a field where there were numerous amount of text and, you know, we were looking for different terms, right? Or we were looking for pretty sort of common terms, okay? So we get back 800 results using that. But if we use the and operator here, let's see how many results we get back we get back 28. So we've went from over 800 results to now only 28. They're pretty accurate. So white wine vinegar. So it's what we're looking for, but it's very narrow, right? And we're not getting back as many results as we would like. With us adding back in the minimum should match parameter, 
and only requiring two of those terms to be present, we still get back. So we get back 236 results. So that's a lot more than what we had in the 28th. And we're still getting back pretty accurate results. Okay, so that's the importance or that's sort of the magic of using the minimum should match. For fuzziness, we have the terms white wine, V-I-N. And I actually went ahead and misspelled the V-I-N and just put it as V-O-N, okay? And so let's run this query. All right, so we'll get back 665 results looking for white wine, V-I-N. And we're not using the N operator. We could use the N operator with this, but we're only using the fuzziness parameter with this. Let's say we were to get rid of all of these parameters, okay? So let's say we were to get rid of fuzziness and we search for these terms. We don't get back any results because it's saying, hey, I can't find any of these terms in our documents. But by adding this back, we're able to get back results. So hopefully this made sense. This was the match boolean prefix query. Hopefully after watching this video, you won't feel so intimidated by using this query in your next search use case. Again, my name is Alexis Roberson. I work as a developer advocate here at Elastic, and thank you for tuning into this video. Have a great day.